welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan, AKA Simply Simmer, and today's Sims 4 speed build is inspired by the converted firehouse from Ghostbusters. If you're a big fan of the movie and you're excited to see how this build turns out, make sure to hit that like button. And if you're a big fan of TV shows and movies, and you wanna see more builds just like this that are recreated in The Sims 4, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell because I have new videos coming out every week that are just like this. So starting out on this build, I essentially just wanted to get a good floor plan down. Sometimes I'm lucky enough to be able to find one that's already been made online and sometimes I have to go through and do my own research. There were several different floor plan variations of the firehouse online, but I think a lot of them were either made off of the TV show or off of the 2016 version of the movie. And I did base this build off of the original 1984 movie, and I don't think that they ever showed the third floor in the movie. I did try scrubbing through and I couldn't really ever decipher if anything was shown up there. So I did end up leaving this down to just the basement, the lower level, and the second level for this build. I did end up building a third floor on this just so then it looked okay from the exterior. So if you do decide to download this from The Sims 4 Gallery, there's just nothing on that third floor. It's just completely empty. But you are welcome to furnish it or do anything that you want up there to make it a little more livable for your Sims. I do have this available now on the gallery and all of my gallery information is listed in the description below the video. I uploaded it as a residential lot, but you're welcome to change it to a community lot or even a haunted residential lot if you have the new pack. And speaking of The Sims 4 paranormal stuff, I really wanted to pick a video that I could build from that had something to do with ghosts or ghost hunting. So of course I picked the best ghost hunting movie of all time. And really I had a lot of fun getting to add in all of the clutter and really digging into the debug menu. In the beginning of the movie, whenever they very first purchased the firehouse, it was really old and abandoned and dirty, and it kind of takes them a while before the clients start rolling in before they started getting their groove together. So I did base this build kind of off of those earlier scenes where everything was still pretty dirty and nothing was organized and everything was very cluttered. So one of the main set points for the movie is Janine's desk. Janine is the secretary for the Ghostbusters, and her desk sits right at the end of the Ecto-1 bay and just outside of the fenced off area for Peter's office. Putting her desk together really reminded me of my very first YouTube video where I rebuilt Dunder Mifflin from the office in The Sims 4. I really got to familiarize myself with all of the different paper clutter and some office type debug items whenever I did that build, so it was really easy for me to put this one together. If you didn't already know, there are three cheats that I use that make adding clutter to your builds way easier. So the first one is bb.moveobjectson, which allows you to place items anywhere you want, even if there's something already in its way. And then the second two are bb.showliveeditobjects and bb.showhiddenobjects. And those two cheats open up the debug menu, which allows you to place different items that you can't normally see whenever you're in the regular build by menu. The next space is Peter's office, which is kind of only shown in the background, except for when Walter Peck from the EPA shows up and starts talking about the environmental impact that the Ghostbusters has. So in one of the scenes, you can kind of see on the back wall that it's covered with different newspaper clippings and articles. And to recreate that, I used the study of the human form painting that I think comes with the base game. And then I also used some debug postcards just to kind of clutter it up and make it look like a bunch of different newspapers. So on both sides of the room, there are some windows and doors that aren't really ever shown in the movie as to where they lead. I do know that one side leads down to the basement, but I wasn't really sure about the other side. So I kind of just made them connect behind this half wall behind the office. And I assume that if this were in real life, it would probably be some kind of storage or something like that. The next part is Peter's desk, which kind of followed the same cluttering technique that I used on Janine's desk. I did want to use some of the new paranormal pack items, so I placed things like the unassuming candy jar, the helping hand, and the book of silhouettes to kind of give this a paranormal feel. Then to finish off this space, I placed some of the redacted rugs, which came from the Strangerville pack. 
and it kind of just looks like a bunch of papers that are scattered all over the floor. And I really like using this rug on builds that are supposed to kind of look messy and grungy. And then I also used the grunge splat rugs that also came with the Stranger Build Pack. And it kind of just makes the floor look really dirty and stained. And I believe that that one is from the debug menu. I end up doing the exterior later on in the video, but to start with, I did have these two big doors that led into the Ecto-1 bay. I do go back later and I change them to a red door to match the exterior, but it does end up looking really nice at the end. So they never showed it in the movie, but the spaces that are cut out on both sides of this were the same on almost every floor plan that I came across. So the smaller room is a bathroom and then the one that's a little bit longer on the other side is a storage space for car parts. And then I will go through and furnish those in just a moment here as well. I know a lot of people don't really care for the Star Wars Journey to the Two game pack that came out, but personally, I love all of the build and buy items that came in that pack. And since so many of those items are grungy and rusty looking, it worked really well for this build. And then also, I think that those big piles of crates and cases, they work really well whenever you're trying to clutter up a large amount of space. In the movie, the lights that are hanging from the ceiling kind of look like these big white bulbs. So originally I used the dome ceiling light that came with Seasons, but then I ended up going back and changing it to the industrial ceiling lamp that came with Get to Work. It kind of gives off, as the name says, that industrial feel. So that's kind of what I was going for and why I made that change. next is probably my favorite part of this build and it may even be the most creative use I've ever used of the debug menu in the entire time I've ever played Sims. So as you may or may not know, there are no cars that you can play with in The Sims 4. So creating the Ecto-1 was definitely going to be a little bit of a challenge, but I knew I needed to add it so I was going to make this work. So to start out with, I placed this base game car from the debug menu, and then on top of it, I placed these lights, which I didn't want to mess this up, so I've got some notes to the side here. So the lights came from the Get Famous pack, and they're called the Active Lot Siren Light, and I raised those up by pressing the number 9 with the Move Objects cheat on, and it kind of created that look of the lights being across the top of the car. And then on the back of the car, so the, the Ecto-1 is actually a Cadillac, so it's got that extended back, and this debug car that I had didn't even closely resemble that. So to kind of recreate that, I used a couple of the items from the Star Wars pack. Um, one of them was the supply crate storage container, and the other was the first order crate. And I kind of just layered those up to kind of give it a little bit more depth and detail to it. And then to create the look of the tanks on top of the car, I used the First Order D93 Incinerator Flamethrower Tank, which is a huge mouthful, but that's what it's called. <laughs> and then I didn't even know that this existed, but it worked almost perfectly. There was this debug item that kind of looks like a big cancel sign, and it came from the Journey to Put Journey to Batu pack. And it worked really well for trying to resemble that Ghostbusters cancel sign. So there's no ghost in it, but it's got the this red circle with a line going through it. And I think that that worked really well to kind of resemble that this is the Ecto-1. And then on each side of the car, there was also some yellow pieces, and I used those, I think that they were just some debug diamond pieces. So I just kind of sized them up and lined them up to create those yellow stripes. And then finally, I used the 90 degrees item from Get Together, which kind of creates this look of the blue hoses that are coming down on each side of it. So the next section is jumping back over to the area that I kind of started working on at the beginning of the video. And this year we're just adding some more detail and clutter specifically to that coffee station. So to create this look, I sized down an island counter piece and then I placed the espresso grindomatic on top of it. 
Originally, I had a desk here, but the way that the island works, it kind of made it look like the espresso maker was floating on top of it. So I swapped out the desk for a base game hostess station, and then it makes it look like the grinder is sitting on top of the hostess station, but it's also still functional for gameplay. Up next, I'm adding furnishings to the bathroom and the car park storage area. So even though neither of these rooms are shown in the movie, I still wanted to keep that industrial look and feel the same here. So in the bathroom, I placed some of the prison plumbing items from Get to Work. And then I also used a debug electrical box and then I placed this new plant from the paranormal pack just to make it look at least a little bit pretty. And then over to the car park storage area, I just placed a couple of the debug items from Journey to Batu. And even though this room has no real function, it still looks pretty cool. As I was digging through the debug menu, I did find these super long cable things, and I think that they came from Journey to Batu, but I wanted to add them to the sides of the room just to kind of give it more of an industrial feel, and I think it ended up looking really cool in the end. Next, we're moving down to the basement. So this is where the Ghostbusters go to dump all of their ghost matter and that's why the EPA ends up getting involved. So to start out with, I placed some of the heavy metal, heavy duty shelving units from Strangerville, and then I also went ahead and used some more of the debug items from Star Wars to recreate the machinery look that the Ghostbusters use. And then I placed some more of those active lot siren lights from the Get Famous pack on top of those. And then there's also a desk here that I just kind of used the same cluttering techniques that I used on the desks upstairs. Then to finish off that last corner, I just used some more of those crates and boxes that came from the Star Wars pack. Now we're moving into the second level, which is kind of like the hangout space. So this is where the Ghostbusters sleep, and then there's also things like a kitchen and a gaming area and a space for them to do their interviews and experiments. So since this is a converted firehouse, there are some poles that firemen, or in this case the Ghostbusters, can slide down and they can get into the fire truck or Ecto-1 as quickly as possible. So to recreate this in the game, on three sides of each of these columns, which line up with the columns that I placed downstairs, I placed the fence pieces from Get to Work, and then the fourth side is some tape fencing that came from Get Famous. And then once I had all of those down, I used the sledgehammer tool to erase the floor inside of that, and it kind of makes it look like a fireman's pole. It's not functional in the game, but it definitely makes it look like a firehouse. Now, if you're not super familiar with the items that come in The Sims 4, those ginormous arcade games that are in the back corner are about as close as I could get to the pinball machines that they have in the movie. I've actually run into this issue a few other times, like whenever I did Big Daddy and Ozark, uh, but unfortunately that's just as close as I could get it. So you will notice that I did kind of start to furnish the kitchen and the dining room, and then I'm adding a few other clutter items throughout this upper space and I'll go back to the kitchen in just a moment to start adding more to that. So on the kitchen walls they kind of had the same newspaper situation that was going on in Peter's office. So I used the same type of artwork and postcards from the debug menu to recreate that. Something that I really like to do in order to make a kitchen feel more cluttered is to add things to the sides of the refrigerator. Now, in order to do this, you do have to delete the walls behind the refrigerator, otherwise the items will try to snap to the walls. And what you basically do is you just delete those walls and then you can resize different pieces of artwork or wall objects and make it look like it's hanging on the side of the refrigerator. And then you can just go back in and add the wall behind it once you're done. Now, I didn't place anything on the front of the refrigerator just because that makes the item unusable by The Sims because it thinks that there's something blocking it, but I think it makes it look really cluttered up and cool. The counters that I used came from Snowy Escape, and I love these because of the open shelves that you can place different clutter items on underneath. 
So the clutter items that I used were the party pack from Toddler Stuff, and then I also used the paranormal plates from Snowy Escape and some of the treat containers that came from Cats and Dogs. Then on top of the counters, I used some of the dish racks that came from the Parenthood pack. And in the movie, they have what kind of looks like a percolator to make coffee. So I placed the coffee maker down and then I used an item called Beakers and Burners that came with the Strangerville pack. And it kind of alluded to the percolator situation that they had in the movie. This next space is shown a few different times throughout the movie and is basically just where they do their interviews with prospective clients or with possessed individuals. So I used a few of the different science-y looking items from Get to Work and then I also used the listening device from the Strangerville pack. This area does also have a sitting area, so I used one of the fabricated couches from the Eco Lifestyle debug menu. Then I also used a an armchair called SEMA Living from the Bowling Night Pack. And then I also just placed a few other armchairs from Get to Work. Next, we're moving to the exterior. I did want to do this before furnishing the rest of the interior because there are some pretty big and bold windows on the front of the building. And I didn't really want that to interfere with anything that I did on the inside and vice versa. I did get to use some of my favorite windows, which are the locked windows from the Moschino pack. I've mentioned this in a few of my other builds, but I really wish that there was a way to drag a wall piece halfway across a tile rather than it taking up a full tile. I really feel like we could get so much more dimension and depth to the walls if we had that. Since we can't do that, I did use some columns that I placed on each side where I changed up the wall covering. And I do kind of go back and forth on which wall coverings to choose, but in the end, I do think that it looks pretty close to the real deal. The debug menu came in handy once again for adding some extra decorations to the exterior. So I did use a few things like the fire hydrant and the stoplight. And then the debug menu for Eco Lifestyle had these yellow metal prong looking things that were sticking up from the ground. And they kind of looked like the bumpers that are on the edges of the bay doors. So those worked really well for that. And then I think it was a few updates ago, but now you can actually download full buildings from the debug menu. So I was able to place this big brick building on the other side of the firehouse. To fully complete the look of this building being in the city, I placed a few of the sidewalk pieces down around the edges of each of the building and then some asphalt to make it look like a highway. I don't think that I mentioned this earlier in the video, but I built this on the old salt house lot in San Myshuno. I wanted there to be a big city in the background of this build and on that lot there's actually a lake on the background. So I actually ended up building this lot backwards and the lake is where the camera is so you can actually see the city as a background rather than the lake. The last little pieces that I added to the exterior were some base game decorative corbels and then I also placed this sign of things to come from City Living as the Ghostbusters sign. <laughs> I will be doing a final walkthrough at the end of the video, but this next minute or two is just kind of showing some things that were only kind of shown during the movie. So this back corner here was shown in the background while the Ghostbusters were doing their interviews. So I kind of just wanted to make this like a laboratory type of setting. So I used lots of big equipment and machinery as well as some tall bookshelves. And then after I was done recording, I did go back through and add a few extra details like some more redacted rugs. And I also put in an element display rack and some beakers as well. This next corner was kind of just an ode to the paranormal stuff pack since that was the source of inspiration to make this build right now. So if you don't have the pack yet and you download this from the gallery, it'll just kind of show as an empty corner because every item here is from that pack. I did end up placing the seance table so that then if you do place this as a haunted residential lot, you can communicate with the ghosts. 
The last two rooms are the bedroom and the bathroom. The bedroom is only shown for a few seconds during a couple of montage scenes, so there wasn't really a whole lot for me to base it off of, but I do know that there are four beds in here for the four Ghostbusters. And then you'll see in just a moment that in the bathroom I placed a few of the bathroom stalls from Discover University, as well as the standalone shower from that pack as well. So aside from the final walkthrough, that just about wraps it up for this build. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so because it really helps me out a lot. And that wraps it up for this one. I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.